Oh, now he's dancing, look above. So this morning I left Hamburg very early um, to get that coach and it took me most of the way through Denmark to where I am now, which is Aalborg in Denmark. Um, and obviously any pronunciations of city names in this video, they're all going to be wrong. I'm just going to say that once in advance and then not mention it again. And the fact that I've come here today means that I've started. Um, I've done the first leg on my most ambitious, or frankly most mad, um, journey that I've ever done. And it's going to be from Germany to the Northern Lights without flying. And I'm so happy to be sat here saying that. I hope it goes really well. I hope we get some good weather. Um, there's obviously gonna be some more bus rides to get there, um, some train rides, but mostly I'm looking forward to the most beautiful looking uh, cruise up the fjords on the west coast of Norway, um, which is gonna take me up to Tromso, where I'm gonna be spending some time watching the Northern Lights, hopefully, unless it's cloudy all month and rainy all month and I don't get to see them. So this is the ferry to Norway. Um, I have a cabin on this so I can get some sleep tonight. We've just left Frederikshafen in Denmark at about midnight. Apparently we get into Oslo about 9 a.m. so I could get a decent amount of sleep, which I really need to do after spending last night on a bus um, and being awake from day to day. But apparently if you get up early enough, the views in Oslo are worth it. So we'll see what time I get up tomorrow. Well, at least I didn't miss much by not getting up early for the view. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in approximately 10 minutes we will arrive in Oslo. Disembarkation will take place on deck 5 at the front hall. Car passengers are requested to go to the car. How cool is that? I just arrived at Oslo on a massive boat. <laughs> I'm going to walk into the city now and find my way to the train station. Hopefully where I'm going has nicer weather than this. <laughs>
Thank you so much. I'm so happy for some reason. I don't know why, it's just cool. Last night I slept on a boat. Right now I'm sat here soaking wet on my own, drinking a coffee in Oslo Central Station. In about an hour I'm riding the train all the way west from Oslo to Norway's west coast to a city called Bergen. Um, it's, I had this on my mind for years as well um, and should have done it the first time that I came to Oslo. Um, today it obviously is rainy and foggy and cloudy so I don't know what we're going to see but I'm still really excited to do it. I mean it's a cool long train journey in Norway and I'm really looking forward to it. Okay we're up on the board now, Bergen. I'm so excited for this and also when I get to Bergen I'm actually spending a few days there as well rather than just passing through like I did in Aalborg and now Oslo. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do since the weather forecast looks really really terrible but I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully get to know the city at least a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you on board regional train service to Van Bergen. Time arrival is 3 minutes past 12 p.m. Thank you. Look at these. Kiwi berries. Kiwi on the inside, but it's really small. They're not bad. <laughs> wow, that train journey was about seven hours long. I didn't notice, it honestly felt like it was about two hours. train ride was pretty stunning today, but it's nothing on the view that I have from this place for the next few days. The rain stopped. I'm gonna go outside and try to explore a little bit in the, in the brief gap between uh, the rain stopping and sunset. Hey, I think this is what I'm doing on Friday when I get the boat um, all through the fjords up to northern Norway. I'm pretty sure this is where I come, so it'll be a boat like this one. It's bigger than I imagined. This 
city is just like, like it hardly seems like a city. It's just so, it's just so nice looking. I can't believe it. I, I love this place. Bergen, 10 out of 10 in the brief moments where it's not raining. <laughs> you make me feel Genius. If I keep on moving, I won't have time to fall apart. And of course, on my last day here in Bergen, it's just been raining and I haven't done anything. <laughs> because, of course, I've just packed for my three days on the boat, traveling uh, further north in Norway. It's the most stuff that I've ever, ever packed. Um, partly because where I'm going is cold weather and bad weather. Um, and also partly because I'm not sure how much food is gonna be available on the boat. Um, so I've made sure to bring a lot of my own just in case. There she is. I got a window. I got a window. <laughs> Look at this. I've got a room on a cruise ship. Me. I'm on a cruise ship. I've got a room with a window going through the fjords for three days. This is mad. <laughs> okay, we're out of here. See ya, Bergen. Your insured is 35 kilometers long and uh, two kilometers wide. Um, like now to join the first tender boat, which goes in roughly 10 minutes to uh, the village of Urke. Then uh, please join us now. Is this for Urke? Do I have to pay extra? Do I have to pay extra to go? Like no, no, no. online? Oh, thanks. Just make sure you get back to the ship on time. Okay, we have. Well, this is all right, isn't it? <laughs> I did not expect that I would get to do stuff like this. Come on land for a bit. This is so cool. Windy though. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, I was going to talk for a minute, but the guy just said to go outside, so, sorry, <laughs> I don't make the rules. Going hard. I'm glad that he said to go outside. <laughs> I feel like uh, views like that are what you only really see when you come this far north and visit some really expensive country. Um, so I want to make the most of it and yeah, that was great. So, so far we've come, this is the whole of Norway and actually I don't know where we are. <laughs> that was worth it. Um, but so we came from Berg, Bergen here and I'm going to Svolvaya, which is one of the ones here. Svolvaya. I obviously don't know how to pronounce that at all um, and so I guess we're like halfway up somewhere um, around here. Tonight is actually my last night on the boat because um, we get to Svolvaya at 9 p.m. tomorrow so although I have another full day on the boat um, this is my last night uh, in this cabin um, and it's been really really great I've enjoyed it I haven't talked much in my two days that I've been on the boat so far that's because I have the most annoying thing, I've got an ulcer on the side of my tongue um, and it really hurts whenever it touches my teeth and yeah that happens when I talk and when I eat and it's so annoying and um, though it's a little bit better today, yeah it just shows that you can spend all this money and come all this way and your body will still find some way to bring you down with like a small but really annoying problem. Even though it kind of hurts to eat at the moment, I was kind of worried when I was coming on this boat about whether or not I'd have enough to eat while I was on here. Um, because you can book either breakfast, lunch, dinner or all three um, and I did the cheapest thing possible and I only got the breakfast but thankfully when I went this morning I was able to absolutely stuff myself full for the rest of the day um, there's all these foods that you might think are like dinner time foods um, and loads of salad and fruit as well so I just ate as much of that as I possibly could so when I get up here to Svolver I'm spending a few days there before moving on to Tromso which was the whole point of me coming here trying to go to Tromso and see the northern lights without flying I'm going to be there for a few weeks and hopefully at some point the weather will be good enough for me to see the northern lights at least once I'd be so happy to just see it once but two or three times would just be amazing Okay, 
listen to this. So I get announcements in my room, they come through, it's like a phone but it has a speaker in it um, and I can push a button to decide whether I want the info announcements on or off. Um, and at first I found them really annoying if I was trying to like have some peace. So all of yesterday I had the announcements turned off. Um, and then while I was asleep, I think it was like half eleven or midnight or something, I was kind of woken up because I could hear the um, the speaker in the hallway outside my room was doing an announcement. But I had such sleepy brain, you know, you'd do anything to stay in bed and go to sleep. Um, and I was like, oh, if it's an emergency, I'm sure they have a way of like forcing it into my room and forcing my speaker to play it to me in my room if it's really that important. So I thought nothing of it, I just went to sleep. And then I came back into my room this morning having seen all that cool stuff outside and, and I was like, wow, I'm gl glad I was out there. I'm making the most of it, seeing everything that there is to see here. And then I came back into my room and I just happened to turn the info announcements back on and I heard him say, Good morning ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a nice time watching the majestic northern lights display last night. I hope that you heard our announcement and went out on deck and got some good photos. We're quite far north in Norway right now, and so you will often see the northern lights up here, but not often as good a display as last night. <sighs> why? Why, 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 why? And that was it, that's the whole reason why I'm here. And now that opportunity's gone. It was here, and I was asleep. I did get the German version of the announcement. Guten Morgen, meine Damen und Herren. Ich hoffe, Sie haben gut geschlafen, trotz äh, dem äh, Himmel, der ja heute Nacht so zwischen zwölf und eins, halb zwei, wirklich gebrannt hat. Äh, wunderschöne Nordlichter sind da gewesen. Ich hoffe, das hat Ihnen gefallen und äh, Sie hatten dann schöne Träume nachher. Wir sind jetzt in der Region der Nordlichter. Wir sind nämlich in Nordnorwegen angekommen und wir haben den Polar... <laughs> Why? Gentlemen, we now have a message from the bridge that northern lights are to be seen at the sky. You can't see this at all on video, but it is there and it is pretty cool. Um, I think it comes up in a couple of pictures. Um, I'm still going to hold out hope for a better showing in the next month though. I just gave it 10 minutes and went back out and it was so much better. I'm still hoping for an amazing, like, proper display when I'm in Tromso at some point, but to have seen it this strongly from the back of a boat with everybody taking pictures and being really excited, it's just so, so good. And I now feel I've definitely seen the Northern Lights and last night's disappointment is made up for. We're almost in Small Fair as well. Uh, I've been on this boat for like 70 or 80 hours and that announcement literally came on when I had like half an hour left on this boat. So I have to like get my stuff now and go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we can as you welcome you to Small Bear, also called the City of Lights. Uh, Small Bear received the city status and... This is what I was missing when I came in yesterday and it was dark. Wow. Just your average hotel car park, I guess, right? And I've just 
just been looking at these this whole time and I've only just, I've had to come this close to notice that it's a staircase. Where does it go to? I, what, what happens at the top? I don't, I don't understand, but um, it looks like it would be an amazing view from up there. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous, um, but we'll go up and if I get spooked, we'll just come down. I was literally just about to say oh, a couple of drops of rain I'm gonna have to decide whether or not to call this and then in the time to get my camera out it's become pouring down with hail and I'm gonna have to call it ah we still saw some amazing views even like 50 steps up it's just not safe and now that I'm down it's not raining at all that's how it goes. This is my hotel while I'm here. Probably the fanciest looking location of anywhere I've ever stayed. Hotel car park keeps getting more and more picturesque every night with more snow falling. I didn't e I'm not even coming to this place like I'm, this is just somewhere that I've walked past on my way to somewhere else you know how it is Norway like, I didn't even know that this was going to be here I think that's the difference it makes when you come to somewhere like this which is less accessible than most places um, like I've just looked this map up uh, this map <laughs> I've just looked this lake up on the map and it's called Lille Kongsvatsnet, something like that. Um, and it's like, doesn't look like a popular spot on the map. It's not marked as a tourist attraction or um, like a, a photography hotspot. It's just like a completely anonymous place. I think like I've just seen in that whole time I was there taking pictures, um, I saw like two dog walkers walk past. Nobody like seems to care. This is just, you know, where they live, it's normal. I've seen this a lot. The Norwegian countryside has all these like creepy industrial sites just hidden in it. Yes, Norwegian government. I th this isn't a facility for testing nuclear powered alien zombie spacecraft. I actually believe you, so don't worry. And you know what day it is today? <laughs> it's my birthday. I carried these all the way from home. It's a nice reminder of my beautiful island back home. Oh. I'm not too old to make a mess, apparently. So I don't know what to call. i 
Farts. You know, comedy. So, on to Tromso, one of the most northernmost cities in the world. The final destination. Well, <laughs> not not in the sense of the horror movie where you know you die. Um, you know, ideally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. First impressions, <laughs> it looks lovely, but it's cold. <laughs> and I'm gonna stay here for like the rest of autumn as well. So this is probably the warmest it will be while I'm here <laughs> and it's cold.
Guess what this is. <laughs> You'll never guess, so I'll just explain it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't really know where to begin with telling this story, so I guess I'll just start. This is a bill from the hospital here in Tromso for an x-ray. And that sounds really dramatic, like I am fine, everything's gonna be fine. Um, so I wanted to spend a few weeks in this city, um, which I have done and like it's it's been so, so good. I've got to know the city a little bit, um, taken some photos that I really like and, and I have enjoyed it. Um, but as you can tell by me saying that this is a bill from the hospital, um, it hasn't gone exactly to plan. So you know these boots that I've carried from Germany because I knew that the conditions would be bad up here eventually and eventually I would need them. So I carried them all this way and I didn't use them. The first time it snowed, there was such a small amount of snow. Um, it just looked nice. It was just nice pictures. I went out with my trainers. Everything was fine. I felt totally secure and I didn't need the boots yet. The next night, it, I guess it had like melted and then refrozen. Um, and I slipped over on the ice on the pavements twice and both times I fell backwards and I caught myself with my right wrist um, and so to cut a long story short um, it's not broken I had to pay a surprisingly low amount for for an x-ray in Norway it only cost like 30 euros which I'm really really happy about and yeah they said it's not broken um, but to be honest it was quite painful and hard to use at that time and now we're two weeks later and it's still fairly painful and still fairly hard to use. Um, and they just said, oh, good news, it's not broken, um, but if it still hurts in two weeks, then see a doctor about it. And we're at that point now. Um, and to be honest, I would rather see a doctor either in England or in Germany. So yeah, I spent these two weeks in Tromso not doing much, definitely not filming much because I wanted to rest it. But since I booked my ticket home, since I decided to leave Tromso, I've thought, well, when I get there, I'm going to rest it a lot, like try and rest it as much as I can. So my last weekend in this city, I'm going to go out and do way too much, even if I kind of agitate it. Like it's, it's not broken, it's only sprained. So like, what's the worst I can do? I still want to try and make the most of my time here. Um, I'm going to really do a lot, even if it agitates it a bit. And then when, I, when I'm back home, then I can really rest it. So I'm going to talk you through each of these stories now and then go home. So where I'm staying in Tromso, I'm actually uh, over the water from the main city. Like it's connected by a bridge and there's two kind of main attractions on this side. We have this building, which is the Arctic Cathedral, which I'll get to in a minute. And we have this cable car. Um, it goes up a mountain, I think it's called Fjellheisen, Shellheisen, something like this. So I walked around to the cable car. It's only like a three minute walk away, but I still put my boots on, took every step so, so slowly. I had my spikes on the bottom of my boots as well, even though Obviously you can't wear them in the cable car, so I had to put them on for like a few minutes walk and then take them off when I got there. The view over the city and the surrounding mountains was so good that I decided I wanted to also see it in the dark with the city lights on. Thankfully there's a cafe up there so I got myself warm with some apple pie and a coffee and waited for the sun to set. Oh, 
after coming down, I went to a performance at the aforementioned Arctic Cathedral. It was a Norwegian folk choir, and I'm not saying I'm going to look them up on Spotify, but I thought that seeing some Norwegian culture in an interesting building like this was too good of an opportunity to miss, and I'm really glad that I went. At this point in my last weekend, I had one night left here to see the Aurora again, so I took a tour. Northern Lights tours in Tromsø are basically trying to find a clear spot without rain and without clouds. Yes, for a few, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> probably around the Dolfjord or Skogsfjord, Mikavika area, that is where we have our best chances of finding clear skies for tonight. Okay. So that's the plan for now, but our plan can also change. They take you far out of the city late at night to wherever the night sky is going to be the clearest. They basically just pick a spot in the tundra where they think the clouds are going to leave you alone, and then you wait. On this tour we passed the time by cooking sausages. Um, you had a choice of pork, reindeer or vegan around a campfire. Oh, you see, it looks like normal sausages. <laughs> it looks like, yeah. Not that scary. Actually, they are quite good. The I tried them, yes. Like uh, burgers, spaghetti burgers, different types. Mm. I'd not this one. Thank you, mate. And then at about one in the morning, we were absolutely blessed. Something very, very nice now. Oh, now it's dancing, look above. You can see how it's moving. Yeah. The aurora are not easy to film. And anyway, nothing can really do justice to what it's like to be there seeing the lights in person. In fact, this is actually my best footage recorded off my camera screen with my phone, but it does show exactly what you could see with the naked eye. Look at it now, there is a thing, there is a thing! Wow. <laughs> that, is, that is the life that you just have to look at because... Yes, on literally my second to last night before leaving Norway. I really agitated my, my wrist and it hurts a lot but... I think it was so worth it. So happy. I didn't get in until really late, but I still found it hard to sleep that night. My brain was just completely buzzing, like the feeling of having come all this way um, and wanting to see this one thing and like almost jeopardizing my trip with an accident and going home and then just in time seeing the most amazing thing that I've wanted to see my whole life and being so lucky to get to see it um, and being out on a tour with like other tourists who really wanted to see it as well just that energy was so so nice it was like such an emotional evening even though I was like exhausted and so I kind of feel like it's a shame that for most of my time here I was just trying to rest my my hand and my wrist um, and I'm embarrassed that I ruined my time up here with an accident that was like so so preventable um, I feel I just had like too much confidence too much bravado and I didn't take the right precautions and I'm um, like yeah quite ashamed of that and it's kind of actually been a hard thing to admit on camera because I know everybody would have seen this coming and like nobody else would have made this mistake and like um, I'm embarrassed that I'm in a privileged position to be here and then I throw it away just by being stupid like I thought I could go anywhere um, and do anything and then it turns out I yeah I can't because I didn't pay enough attention but I'm trying to put a positive spin on it and not beat myself up like coming here on my own and doing this trip was a lot like 
it, I've done a lot to achieve this and I've still seen everything I wanted to see. I've still spent some time up here. I still have some cool stories. And the fact that I hurt myself, like, yeah, doing this was a lot. And I think the more you do, the more room you have to make mistakes. Um, like I probably wouldn't have hurt myself if I'd stayed at home. I did more than just staying at home. Um, and I'm really sad about it because like, I hate stuff like this, like medical stuff anyway. Um, and I regret that I had to spend most of my time in Tromso just resting my wrist. It seems like it makes no sense, but it is just how it is. Like, so yeah, I think that's where we'll leave it. Um, don't be scared to do stuff out of your comfort zone, but don't be so not scared as I was. <laughs> like, take a bit more caution. And we'll end it by putting the Northern Lights back on screen. I came here by myself without flying. I really did it. I really saw them and that makes it a success. So, see ya.